Hello everyone, so we got breaking news. Joe C. Nail Biden has finally signed an executive order to end the border crisis, right? <laughs> we'll see about that. I'm going to break it down for you today. Now, Americans are saying this is our number one issue and I can't blame them. This has been a back-to-back -back disaster, a total nightmare. And I'm an immigrant, now an American citizen, that can recognize this has been a complete embarrassment to those immigrants that come here to work hard. But don't take my word for it. Let's go to New York to see what happened just a few days ago. Now to the latest on our top story right now, a terrifying shootout between police officers and a gunman on a moped in Queens. Two officers were shot early this morning. The suspect also was shot. All three are recovering. The suspect is under police supervision at the hospital. The two officers are out of the hospital, uh, comfortable, uh, hopefully comfortable at home. <laughs> comfortable at home. What a disgrace. Right now, we're awaiting for charges to be announced for the 19-year-old suspect who police have now identified as Bernardo Castro Mata. Well, this is the person who they believe to be responsible in this police-involved shooting that left two officers injured. I want you all to take a look at the scene right now. This, as an active investigation, continues at this 10 o'clock hour. Well, just to give you a background as to what led up to this moment, officers were addressing a robbery pattern in East Elmhurst early this morning. Well, that's when they tried to pull over that suspect on a scooter headed in the wrong direction. Well, this pursuit continued on foot when the 19-year-old suspect shot at police, and that's when officers returned gunfire. Well, police tell us that suspect, Bernardo Raul Castro Mata, who was a migrant from Venezuela, entered via Eagle Pass, Texas just last year, and now lives at the former Marriott not too far away, which has since turned into a shelter. Now, the 19-year-old suspect is being treated at New York Presbyterian Queens Hospital, but here at the scene, an hours-long investigation continues continues as the crime scene unit placed nearly two dozen markers as they narrowed in on their search for clues and evidence. Take a look at your screen. This is the illegal gun that was recovered at the scene from the suspect that shot Officer Christopher Abreu in the upper leg and Officer Richard Yoruso, who was grazed on the stomach. Now, the 19-year-old suspect was shot in the right ankle, and earlier this morning, Mayor Adams showed us what exactly prevented this tragedy. This is a bullet hole. Because of this vest, a young police officer is going home. Senseless act of violence, a total disregard for life. Once again, this could have gone a very different way. It's only by the grace of God that we're here talking about a terrible tragedy. But we are here again talking about illegal firearms and the violent criminals who have absolutely no problem using them against our officers. Now, the good news is they are all recovering right now and expected to be okay. Important to note that this robbery pattern that these officers were addressing were of those similar to the suspect who are on these e-bikes and scooters and committing crimes from shootings, robberies as well as snatching phones. Remember, this is normal now and in just a couple of weeks, this will be old news. Notice how the lamestream media is not having a panic attack reaction over this. And I can assure you that we won't have any liberal idiots going on the streets causing riots or forming any violent protests over this anywhere in the country since this does not follow the racial narrative they love. Nevertheless, let's see what senile Joe Biden signed on this border crisis that he and the mainstream media created. Let's get started. Four months ago, 
After weeks of intense negotiation between my staff and Democrats and Republicans, we came to a clear, clear bipartisan deal. It was the strongest border security agreement in decades. But then, Republicans in Congress, not all, but walked away from it. Why? Because Donald Trump told them to. He told the Republicans, it has been published widely by many of you, that he didn't want to fix the issue. He wanted to use it to attack me. So today, I'm moving past Republican obstruction and using the executive authorities available to me as president to do what I can on my own to address the border. But Republicans have left me no choice. Today, I'm announcing actions to bar migrants who cross our southern border unlawfully from receiving asylum. Migrants will be restricted from receiving asylum at our southern border unless they seek it after entering through an established lawful process. And those who seek to come to the United States legally, for example, by making an appointment and coming to a port of entry, asylum will still be available to them, still available. But if an individual chooses not to use our legal pathways, if they choose to come without permission and against the law, they'll be restricted from receiving asylum and staying in the United States. I believe that immigration has always been a lifeblood of America. We're constantly renewed by an infusion of people with, and new talent. The Statue of Liberty is not some relic of American history. It stands for who we are as the United States. So I will never demonize immigrants. I'll never refer to immigrants as poisoning the blood of a country. And further, I'll never separate children from their families at the border. I will not ban people from this country because of their religious beliefs. I will not use the U.S. military to go into neighborhoods all across the country to pull millions of people out of their homes and away from their families to put detention camps and away, while awaiting deportation, as my predecessor says he will do if he to occupies his office again. Liar. Filthy liar. He removed many of Trump's policies that were securing the border to then create this mess so that he could blackmail Republicans into approving bills to fund ridiculous wars so that the money laundering scheme gets bigger than ever before. And now he's talking about the separation of children like he cares. What about the cages that Biden here and Obama put the migrant children in for years and nobody said anything. Well, he is senile after all, so I guess it would make sense that he would forget about it, but I didn't. For about two weeks, the Border Patrol has refused to allow reporters and cameras into facilities where agents are housing hundreds of immigrant children. But today, we finally got a look. The Border Patrol allowed only one video camera into holding centers in Nogales and in McAllen, Texas. A large group of reporters was allowed to come into this facility in Nogales, but under strict ground rules as a condition for entry. No cameras, at least no cameras we control directly, no sound recordings of any sort, and no questions. What we saw does track what we saw in pictures taken in secret days before. Kids in chain link holding areas using foil blankets. But now we have context and explanation. Agents say the foil blankets, for instance, reduce the chance of allergic reactions. They say the facility was not set up hastily to cope with a glut of immigrant children. They say it is a facility built about the year 2000 for adult detainees, converted when the need arose to house hundreds of children. Our message absolutely is don't send your children unaccompanied uh, on trains or through, uh, through a bunch of smugglers, we don't even know how many of these kids don't make it and may have been waylaid into sex trafficking or killed because they fell off a train. We have no way of tracking that. So that is our direct message to the families in Central America. Do not send your children to the borders. If they do make it, they'll get sent back. More importantly, they may, may not make it. So let's see what we got here. Senile Joe Biden on Tuesday issued an executive order to temporarily suspend the processing of most asylum claims at the southern U.S. border when the seven-day average of unauthorized crossings exceeds 2,500. There you go. There's a limit. 2,500 a day. <laughs> Oh man, this is a big business deal 
for the cartels. According to Gallup, it ranked as the biggest problem facing our country for three straight months this year, the longest stretch in more than two decades. And with Congress deadlocked on the issue, doing absolutely nothing, and record numbers of illegal crossings during Biden's tenure, the question is, what took the president so long to take this executive action? What does the executive order issued today actually do, and will it stop the flow of illegal migrants? Well, it will not stop the flow. It is gonna, it's, it's gonna lower the numbers, but let me explain to you why there's still issues here. People, there are certain things that people aren't talking about. I've been out here you know, for decades, and I can tell you where the problem is gonna be. The cartels, they're the ones that run the southern border. They're the ones that, that dictate where people cross, how they cross, and everything like that. So what they're gonna do now, okay, because it's obvious, they're going to make sure that they themselves keep track of the numbers of how many people are crossing per day. They're going to get the people that they want to cross per day to cross. They're still going to realize that something like this is going to, you know, uh, lock the hands of the agents having to process. So they'll they'll focus on one sector and then they'll continue to flood many areas of the border with the gotaways. And that's, you know, unfortunately, that's the truth. It's a little bit too little, too late. Uh, you know, they, they've ignored the problem for three and a half years. Now they're saying there's an issue, obviously, because it's an election year. Uh, but something like this, they need to understand, look, the cartels are very smart. They know how to adapt. They're going to adapt when it comes to something like this. Uh, and it's just, again, too little, too late. And it's unfortunate that, you know, the people that are going to pay the price is the American public, but also the individuals that are coming across because now they're going to have to go through more rigorous terrain, turning themselves over to the smuggling organizations themselves. <laughs> Incredible. Under this order, migrants who cross without authorization, absent exceptional circumstances, would not be eligible for asylum and subject to expedited removal. The new rule raises the threshold to grant an asylum hearing based on a credible fear claim. That is when a migrant manifests fear of prosecution or torture in their native country or country of removal. The restrictions will remain in place until 14 days after the seven-day average of illegal crossings drops below 1,500. The measures will go back into effect once the number reaches 2,500, the magic number. Beyond restrictions, this new rule allows permanent residents, unaccompanied children, victims of a severe form of trafficking, and other non-citizens with a valid visa or other lawful permissions to enter the United States. Well, listen to this brilliant. Now, those that want to send unaccompanied children are going to see this and say, oh, well, they are an exception. So we can send them through the border. Let the unaccompanied children come in. More child trafficking. What a fantastic executive Order, Senile Biden, you did it again. President Biden's executive order is changing the way immigration officials handle those who enter the country illegally. And what I see from this executive order is they're trying to um, crack down on, you know, unlawful crossings. We spoke with immigration attorney Darius Amari. He says the big takeaway is just how quickly this order allows the federal government to turn away people which is a big change from how it is now. With the effect of this executive order, they could already be deported before they even have a chance to, to plead their case. The president's order allows officials to swiftly deport anyone who tries to cross without an asylum appointment. The order can be lifted if the daily average number of illegal crossings dips below 1,500, but it can also be reinstated if it goes above 2,500. I do think there'll be some exceptions. I did read that there would be exceptions for like unaccompanied minors and maybe people who have extraordinary cases. Victims of human trafficking is another listed exception. Go figure. The cartel is probably like, well, now we can use this as an exclusive traveling package. And when the migrants call us, we can say, hey, we are completely booked up for the next two to three months, but don't you worry about it. If you got more money, we can let you skip the line in front of those who are already skipping the line. What a clown world. And they can say, hey, this way 
you won't have to wait two to three months. We can bring you in as soon as next week if you want to. And that's it. The madness continues. The cartel will make bigger bucks here, all thanks to Joe Biden and his trashy administration. Hence, Americans, please feel better. Now you have an organized border crisis with, remember, with some exceptions. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, guys, that's it for today's video. I wanted to give you this update as soon as I got it. So thank you so much for watching and supporting my page. The shout outs for those amazing supporters are in the description of this video. Please join my Discord. The invite link is in the description as well. And follow me everywhere. Smash the like button and subscribe. I will see you guys on the next one.